Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and on this episode of Lost Film File, I'm going to talk about The Black Cauldron. The Black Cauldron had been in production at Disney since about the early 70s. They tried to get everyone from Don Bluth to Ralph Bakshi to possibly direct this thing, and even had John Clements and Ron Musker involved. Um, but they ended up having it directed by an older Disney animator and also a guy who directed a bunch of Alpha and Omega sequels. But this was a big deal for Disney. It was considered kind of a more mature fantasy film. It was going to be their first to not be rated G. It was going to be rated PG. And it was their first animated film with no songs whatsoever. No characters are singing songs. There are no songs in the background. So this is a big change for them, and they're trying something new. And maybe, I guess some would say, a little too new. Uh, before a planned uh, Christmas 1984 release, they did some test screenings held at the studio's private theater in Burbank, California. They invited families and parents and stuff. And during a particular sequence called the Culture Important Sequence, the sequence became too intense, too disturbing, and frankly, just too scary for a bunch of the kids uh, who left the audience screaming and crying with their parents. And Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was newly appointed with Michael Eisner to run Disney and sort of bring it back, demanded that the film be cut. Uh, he ordered it to be cut, and they're like, well, you just can't just cut an animated film. He's like, sure you can, and actually took the film to the editing bay to actually cut it, and it wasn't until Joe Hale came to Michael Eisner to try to get Jeffrey Katzenberg to stop, because he was just literally going to do it and literally cut parts of the film out that he felt were hurting or too disturbing for a Disney film. Michael Eisner stopped him, but still he eventually told them they need to cut around 10 minutes and they went back and forth. Joe Hale, the producer, um, went back, cut about six minutes. Then they screened it for Jeffrey Katzenberg again and he noticed it was about six minutes and they ended up cutting about 12 minutes from the mostly and pretty much finished film. Uh, which is pretty rare because animation at that time it's all traditional animation it was an expensive movie it cost about 20 million dollars which at the time was i think the most expensive animated film ever and they're just cutting sequences that are fully done this is not usually you do that in the storyboards or the animatic stage or the planning stage before you spent millions of dollars like they probably ended up cutting out hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars from this film to make it i guess uh, a little more palatable um, less scary and less of a problem for Disney or perceived as much from Jeffrey Katzenberg. And because of these cuts, it actually was delayed from its original uh, Christmas 1984 release and held back into uh, a July 1985 release, which still actually didn't work out for me. But what was actually cut or what do we know is cut? Because we don't actually know uh, fully, I guess, because it's never we've never seen most of it. Um, the main sequence that everyone talks about is the Cauldron Born sequence. In this, we know um, basically the whole, not to spoil the movie, I don't know why you're watching it, if you want to watch Black Cauldron, but the whole point of the movie is for the Horn King to get the Black Cauldron and bring the Cauldron Born, like this unstoppable army of skeletons and stuff, back from the dead. When this fog raises up upon it, it um, kind of attacks some people and uh, the scenes we do have, which are frames that uh, some cells that were found. One of the king's henchmen who's mauled by one of the cauldron born, then uh, because of that, his skin starts having like lacerations and his skin starts boiling. And then because I guess he's injured or dying, you see him slowly transform into one of the skeletal uh, cauldron born, uh, which <laughs> sounds really bad. Apparently there was a decapitation by one of the cauldron born at this sequence. We've never seen anything from that, but that's what we've Hurt. another person cutting someone in half from like the top half from their bottom half a lot of like violent creepy stuff and i mean that kind of makes sense honestly because you hear this whole movie how evil the cauldron born sort of is so it's like i mean it is it is it does <laughs> like they pushed it a little far but it, it's not wholly inappropriate because they're like bad guys and bad guys like kill people and stuff so it like it in, in a sense, I think it makes more sense. People often claim because there was a huge cut in this, you can tell like some of these, the editing is done better than other sequences. It just looks like they didn't have enough ideas for a certain sequence, to be honest. Um, they say there's a jump in the soundtrack. On the one on Disney Plus, I didn't hear it. I have remember, I'd seen this film before Disney Plus. 
and I sort of remember that jump. Maybe I'm making that up in my head and that was just the theatrical. I'd be surprised if like Disney left such a, because this is a pretty written about error, why they would leave that in because on Disney Plus it's in 4K and stuff. But that's kind of one of the bigger uh, sequences in it. But it, there's not, that's not the only sequence, but it is like one of like, I think the cooler sounding, cooling looking ones. And we were able to find some of those because of an auction that was on sale. That's why those are able to, and there's been some recreations and stuff like that. Of all of them, that's kind of the most notorious. Other deleted scenes, um, and I think these deleted scenes particularly hurt uh, the character of Taryn, um, who seems to have a lot more violent scenes where he is, I wouldn't say violent scenes, but action sequences. Taryn has more action sequences in the original uh, cut of the film that makes him seem more heroic than in the cut of the film that's out there now. He just seems like, you know, a, a whiny baby. Uh, one, one of which is him fighting his way out of the Horn King's castle with his magic sword. Um, that did seem to go by quick. And when I read later, I was like, oh yeah, I was surprised like most fantasy films would, you know, have a longer set piece or something like that. And it just felt like they moved on almost too quickly, which I think is like a lot in a couple places. I'm like, oh, that was, that was all that was. And it just feels like they just didn't have the material. And the, th this is another one. And I think it hurts Taryn because y if you saw that, you'd think of him more heroically. Or I assume, I haven't actually seen him do this. There's shots of uh, the princess in this with sort of ripped garments that apparently were also cut when they're all like hanging up at the Horn Kings, uh, at the Horn Kings castle, as well as um, a sequence of the Horn King with a floating cloak, with both sequences involving the world of uh, fair folk. Um, this one is a little different because two of the characters who were completely cut out, Glue and Gristletoll, um, who were completely cut out, but Gris Gristle Gristletoll, it'll be down here, I don't know. It does a appear in this Sierra adventure game based on the film, which again shows you like, since video games take a while, especially then, a while to develop, um, they probably watched a different cut of the film to like develop it. And apparently some of this stuff does appear in like some of the coloring books and some of the other various merchandise that was supposed to come out with the Black Cauldron. Um, but yeah, one of these characters, Whistles Will, just shows up in the game and nothing else. They are an art stuff uh, for the DVD uh, that came out eventually. And finally, uh, there was a more action oriented uh, sequence with Terran and the Horn King before the Horn King is sucked into the Black Cauldron. Uh, in the movie, the Horn King just pushes him over. Um, again, Terran really got fucked over by the things getting cut out because that's again a cooler sequence that <laughs> for him, but instead he just gets like knocked over and that's it for him. They did release like this cut down version, it didn't do well, and we've never really seen these sequences that we've heard about and there is uh the youtube channel that does that i will link to them down below has recreated everything there's smaller sequences and things like that that they have found these are just the larger sequences that were cut and i i suggest if you don't want to just hear me talking and detailing all these things you should definitely check them out and subscribe and things joe hale is said to have a black and white cut of like the complete black cauldron as it was being screened in 1984. Supposedly there is a full cut in Burbank. Neither of these things have been proven. This is entire kind of speculation and it doesn't seem Disney has ever really been proud of this film. It wasn't released until 1998 on VHS. There is kind of like this weird 80s period where it does feel like it took them forever to release some of the like, I think Oliver and Company came out in 1996 on VHS. Like they took forever to get some of those things were right before the Renaissance on VHS. But like 1998, it basically like skipped my entire childhood. Um, I have like no real childhood memories of this film. It's more me just looking back on it. They actually did try to recut it. Supposedly for the VHS market, according to uh, a 2020 interview with Don Hahn, they did try to recut it and cut it down even more for a VHS release, but they felt like it worked even less than it did, so they didn't go through with it. But there also is true that in select markets, uh, they did test a Terran and the Magic Cauldron, which was, they kept seeing ads for a G-rated cut and a shorter runtime. Maybe that was that cut. Um, this happened in 1990, so we don't, like, unless somebody brought a, a video camera there to make a bootleg or something, 
I, I don't think we really know and anyone's memories from that are like probably so long ago and they probably hadn't seen the black cauldron at the very least five years before so i i, I don't you know i don't I, I don't know if there's any way to find out if they made an even worse or cut or something some of them just have the same runtime and just have it have the different title but they did continue to kind of mess with black cauldron and try to get it to i guess seemingly uh work because they spent so much money on it. and that is sort of what disney used to do uh I, I would honestly say disney used to never really have bombs it's hard to think of them because they would just re-release stuff and make so much merchandise of it that eventually it would actually be profitable and that has not really worked out with this one for a long time, I didn't understand why they wouldn't just release a Blu-ray or a DVD, but now that they have Disney Plus, couldn't they just make like an extra little special feature and it's like, here is the original cut of Black Cauldron? Because I, one, I don't think it's a big enough title that anyone but adults would even care about it. I mean, they're like tile for it on Disney Plus when I rewatched it to do this video. My kids like didn't even care. Uh, so it's, I, I don't, I don't think a bunch of kids would mistakenly go on it and if they do really have it uh and a good cut of it i i just think they should release it at this point i don't really understand um why I keep cutting it down and so forth it was an interesting experiment for disney to try to do i think they were a little too late because the the fantasy thing it sort of was definitely over at that point but what's interesting and I was thinking about this um, both because when I shot this, uh, the Willow TV show had come out and I rewatched Willow the movie, which is from 19, 1989, 1988, I think. Um, that has a lot of horror elements and that is considered a family film. And even though that wasn't the most successful, did a lot better than Black Cauldron and kind of makes me think like just having those horrific elements, like it did well on video, um, they released it more properly. Had they had kept those in there and just stuck their guns and like give it a VHS release that was close to the release of it and like actually treated it, you know, better right after and released it in the proper way they usually do. Could this have ended up actually being successful? Much like even, you know, Willow wasn't the biggest success, but it sort of worked out for that movie a lot more than it worked out for this one. And I know that was four years later and stuff, but it kind of shows to me that you would have had kids being freaked out and stuff. And granted, I have not seen the Cauldron Born sequence that I talked about in this video. So I don't know what I'm talking about. I think that's part of the issue with it, but um, I think it would be a really fun thing for fans. I think it would rejuvenate the brand. I doubt they're selling a ton of Black Cauldron stuff. So like, let's like, let's have fun with it. If they really do have it, it just seems like a cool extra special feature and just like let the theatrical cut still be the first one that comes up. It's just a special one. I don't understand why they don't do that at this point. Why not save this film's reputation if you can, especially if you have it, how long would it take? I mean, you restored the Black Cauldron. You know, if you're gonna restore the Black Cauldron, might as well put the full director's cut. I mean, it's just, uh, how much would that cost? I've never really understood why they were so weird about it. I haven't seen these sequences. Maybe if I saw them, I would felt differently. Maybe we'd all felt differently. We are like, decapitation in a Disney movie? Come on, guys. Um, maybe it, it is really that horrific. But I think um, the fact that it was a Disney film, a major film, one that um, ended up, you know, being the failure that started the Renaissance, kind of makes this a little more notable, but also makes you wonder what were these scenes that were so, they were so afraid of and would the film have been a lot better had they been included? I think that's what, one of the bigger things that you really think um, that I've always thought with this one, but I hope eventually this does get released in some fashion in a real cut the way this film was at least intended because I think it sort of deserves to finally, you know, see the true vision and the true idea of what the Black Cauldron was supposed to be. So if you would like to talk about the lost footage from Black Cauldron, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.